In the darkness of the most unexpected corners, stories emerge that remind us of the duality of the human being. Welcome once again to La Criminotica. In a previous episode, we delved into the life of Juan Carlos Aguilar, the former karate champion whose double life left Spain in shock. But that story was not complete. Today, with more details and delving into previously unaddressed aspects, we present the second part of this chilling case. We have worked hard to present you with a comprehensive and detailed overview. We sincerely hope that you appreciate the effort and that the end result meets your expectations. Join us as we reveal the outcome of one of the most disturbing crimes in recent Spanish history. The Fake Shaolin Monk Classification, Killer Characteristics, Dismemberment, he enjoyed maintaining sexual practices of domination with women subjected to him and defenseless, even fainted or deprived of consciousness. Number of Victims, 2. Date of Crime, May, June 2013. Date of Arrest, June 2, 2013. Date of Birth, 1965. Victim, Jenny Sofia Raboyo, 40, and Maureen Ada Otuya, 29. Method of Crime, Strangulation with a Esparto Rope. Location, Bilbao, Spain. Status, convicted, guilty, of, necessary murder, by a jury on April 23, 2015. Sentenced to 38 years in prison on April 30, 2015. Jailed false Shaolin teacher accused of two homicides. June 5, 2013. After giving a statement for several hours in the Bilbao judicial offices, the judge has ordered the entry into prison of Juan Carlos Aguilar, accused of murdering two women. The victims are the Nigerian Marin Ada Ortuya, who died this morning from injuries caused by Aguilar after locking her in a gym she owned, and Jenny Sofia Raboyo, a 40-year-old Colombian immigrant, whose remains were found in garbage bags. In the same place. Aguilar is still in the courts waiting to be transferred to the Basori prison, Bizkaya. The Urtsaintsa has been able to identify the Colombian woman because she had been previously registered. Although there are no reports of her disappearance, members of the Colombian community in Bilbao have declared that they have not known her whereabouts for two weekends. This data coincides with the hypothesis of the investigation that establishes her death around May 25th. According to sources of the investigation, Aguilar declared in police stations that he felt confused and believed that he had killed a woman on May 31st. Like Maren Ada Ortuya, 29, Jenny Sofia Raboyo worked as a prostitute. Her relatives have reported that she Raboyo was originally from the Colombian town of Monteria, in northwestern Colombia, she had been residing in Spain for about 10 years. She had two children, one of whom lived with one of her sisters in Colombia, according to the Colombian newspaper El Tiempo. Lies, Crimes and Mysticism June 9, 2013 The woman is bound hand and foot. She lies unconscious on the ground, at the feet of the so-called master, who impassively watches the arrival of some nervous Ertzainas because they have just forced the small door of her temple. The teacher is calm, standing up, his torso bare and his gaze lost. He wears dark blue sweatpants. He can't hide the deterioration of recent years, his belly gives him away, like the flaccidity of her muscles. His appearance is sordid, so far removed from the careful staging of her promotional videos. They push him away unkindly, he doesn't resist, there are nerves and voices around him, the agents turn their attention to the woman and he attends withdrawn, oblivious to what is happening at the scene of the new crime he has just committed. He only speaks when an agent sniffs in a garbage bag deposited a few meters away and discovers that inside there are bones with some piece of muscle, they belong to a woman I killed a week ago. A week ago. Two deaths in two weeks. The scene of the Shaolin master's crime was apparently clean, there was no blood, there was no other trace of violence than the body of Ada Ortuya, a 29-year-old Nigerian girl, lying on the ground, 
tied with ropes, with no brain activity. Whether she died from suffocation, strangulation, or a fatal blow is yet to be determined. It is very likely that the hands of Juan Carlos Aguilar, 47, have been the murder weapon, a man like him knows the vital points of the human body. During a distant time he attributed the skills of the warrior and more recently those of the one who is closest to God. Or Buddha, in his case. The teacher was not naked. He was not involved in any sexual act. Nor in some kind of ceremony or religious rite, despite the fact that the stage was presided over by a great white figure of Bodhidharma, the patriarch who spread Buddhism throughout China. Ada or Tuya was going to die, she would in fact die three days later, as Jenny Raboyo, a 40-year-old Colombian, died, but the reason remains to be explained. Aguilar, the few times he broke his silence, did not give any reason. He feigned forgetfulness, as if his body went one way and his mind the other. And at some point he alluded to a brain tumor. He was not under the influence of any drug or alcohol, as determined by the first tests. The Urtsensa investigators have never stopped working on the hypothesis that Juan Carlos Aguilar, the so-called teacher, Sifu or Abbot, is a serial killer. The scene of the crime itself, the confession of a first murder, the profile of his victims, immigrants who work in prostitution, the evidence that he was capable of mutilating a body, separating its viscera to throw it into the estuary and keeping some bones invite there too. They will begin to investigate his personal files and, of course, his past. Also in his heritage, which should not be small because he has hired the services of Javier Baramendi, one of the most prestigious criminal lawyers in Bilbao. The first thing that has caught the attention of many people, from the Urtsensa to those who knew him, is his physical deterioration. He does not correspond to a master in martial arts. And even less with someone who has concocted a whole fantasy around him, as an athlete, false world champion of Kung Fu three times and eight times from Spain, as the only Spaniard admitted to the exclusive Shaolin Temple, as a teacher, as an anthropologist, this is how he appeared in his mailbox, and, recently, as abbot of the false Buddhist monastery in Bilbao, his last known name. Aguilar founded associations, most of them not even registered, for example, the Institute of Oriental Philosophies, with headquarters in its premises on Maximo Aguirre Street, in the heart of Bilbao, a few steps from the Louis Vuitton premises in the city, the stage of the crime. He was also a man of excessive narcissism, capable of applying himself violently with his students or demanding a curious vow of poverty from his followers, from whom he demanded money. In the opinion of his former students, Aguilar always showed a certain complex with his short stature, he was barely 1.60 meters tall, which he tried to compensate with an excess of character. This way of founding false associations and creating titles is not exclusive to Aguilar, it is common currency in the scattered world of martial arts. It is now known that, in a city like Bilbao alone, the number of officially recognized Tai Chi instructors amounts to 15, a minimal figure compared to the extent of their practice in private gyms and municipal facilities. Aguilar's physical deterioration began in 2004. It seems that his best years, starting with his trip to China in 1994, have passed. In the year 2000 he was interviewed by Edward Punset for the Reeds program, he promoted himself in videos and magazines and appeared from time to time on television as an authority on the subject. In a 2004 interview on Telemadrid with the now writer Javier Sierra, he stated, I have left the martial part and the physical part. His wife, with whom he has had two children, separates from him, after living a nightmare life with him, says a former student, breaks up with many people, enters a new path of contradictory spirituality, without ceasing to side keep making money. His character is increasingly unbearable. He says that he is able to control energy from him. He is on a higher scale. He stands close to Buddha. It is from this mystical drift that the Urtsensa will try to find not only an explanation for the crimes,
but certainties about what this man could have been doing in the last seven years, crouched in the bowels of an overconfident city. Because Bilbao is a safe city, where six months can go by without a bloody murder, 14 violent deaths throughout the Basque country in 2012, according to official statistics, including those of gender violence. This has been the case this year, 2013, until its inhabitants found themselves face to face with the dilemma that in the heart of the city a man could have been killing women for who knows how long and sending his remains to the estuary. It had been 16 years since there had been a double crime in the capital and now this misnamed Shaolin master appears surrounded by lies, crimes and mysticism. Shaolin Monk's Hell August 24, 2014 Twice he had experienced the same orgy of sex and blood. And perhaps he would have continued his mad criminal career if the Ertzainza had not put an end to his terrifying descent into hell. Juan Carlos Aguilar, son of Absalon and Severina, born in 1965 in Baracaldo, Vizcaya, self-styled Shaolin monk, is awaiting trial today, accused of killing two women in 2013. He already said on his website that he knew suffering since he was a child and that he had lived through hell since one of his brothers introduced him to martial arts until he became a Shaolin monk in the Chinese province of Hunan. At around 3.20 am on May 25, 2013, Aguilar was driving his Mitsubishi down Calle del General Concha, in Bilbao, when he invited Colombian Yeni Sofia Rivalo Turin, who at 40 was the mother of two children, to get into the car. The woman was going through a bad moment, which she drowned in alcohol. She that night she was very drunk. She took Rivalo from her to her gym on 12, Maximo Aguirre Street, and after tying her up, he killed her. She later photographed herself in an obscene attitude next to the victim's naked body. Later he dissected her corpse. With the precision of an experienced butcher, he sectioned the phalanges of the index fingers, extracted the breast implants, and part of the remains he hid in a false ceiling, others he burned in the gym, and others he kept in his apartment at No. 5, Itariza Street. Throughout the hours he would throw them into the Bilbao estuary or in the domestic garbage. In the days that followed, the self-proclaimed founder of the Ocean of Tranquility Buddhist Monastery continued to hold classes for his proselytes. As if nothing had happened. Only one of his most fervent disciples noticed him more nervous and irascible than usual. And that he frequently suffered outbursts of anger that his followers attributed to his eagerness to teach them swordsmanship or make them reach nirvana. In the early hours of June 2nd, he returned to General Concha Street, where he contacted Maureen Ada Otuya, a 29-year-old Nigerian. They both headed to the gym. After having sex, he tied up and gagged her wife, while he began to strangle her and beat her viciously on the head and abdomen. For 500 endless minutes, Otuya suffered in grisly torment. After nine hours of torment, around three in the afternoon, she managed to free herself and, terrified, she stumbled up the twenty steps that separated her from the exit. Through the bars of the gate she uttered desperate cries for help. Veronica L., a neighbor who was passing by on the sidewalk, alerted the Ertzainza. When the agents entered, they found the Buddhist warrior beside himself, with a naked torso and bloody hands. Otuya was dying, he had five loops of string wrapped around his neck, as well as a plastic tie and adhesive tape. In the search of the gym, the Ertzainas discovered several bags with human remains, as well as swords, axes, sabers, sticks, knives, a saw, a pistol, videotapes, CDs, and photos of women naked or dressed in provocative clothing and in lewd attitude. The victim died 48 hours later at the hospital. The alleged murderer had an army of followers and, above all, female followers who admired him to the point of paroxysm. Women like Eva, Carolyn, Ekaterina, Begonia, Maria Jose, Maria del Mar, Cristina and Anna, who not only maintained intimate relations with the teacher, but also felt true veneration for him. Anna, a rigger from Bilbao in her early forties, was thick and thin with Aguilar. 
She herself, who defined herself before the Ertzenas as her novice, said that she was grateful to him because she was an antisocial woman and he had taught her to communicate with a man, to know how life is. Anna didn't care that her guide called her whore. Not that he wanted to play her most abject sexual games with her. Not that she slept with Begonia, with Ekaterina, or with others. Nor that he forced her to dress as a nun or a nurse. Or that on more than one occasion, as she declared, she lost her pot and squeezed her neck until she was almost breathless. Begonia, submissive as a lamb, acceded to all the whims of the leader, although she defined Aguilar as a superb, arrogant, manipulative and self-centered guy to the point of forming his gym into a kind of sect. Jose Miguel Fernandez Lopez de Urold, private prosecutor on behalf of Otuya's father and brother, considers that the false Shaolin monk enjoyed engaging in sexual practices of domination with defenseless women, beating them to death, while collecting said practices as support photos for your later enjoyment. Thus, the Basque police discovered in the memory of a photographic camera 74 images in which Aguilar appears with a live, naked and handcuffed woman and later with that same dead woman. He also located two photos taken 35 hours later in which a blindfolded woman is seen in the foreground, a certain Eva with whom the false Shaolin man had had relations for years, with the former's corpse as a backdrop. Nobody knows what strange short circuit occurred in the neurons of the alleged murderer to induce him to such carnage. No one has managed to enter the arcana of his mind. He refuses to be subjected to a psychiatric examination. In March 2010, he had gone to the Clinica Universitaria de Navarra for memory problems. He recounted that in December 2008, while climbing at an altitude of 5,550 meters, he had the sensation of imminent death. Since that day, my thinking slows down, I have disconnections, I feel like my brain stops, she added. The doctors discovered an arachnoid cyst in the left temporal bone, of a congenital nature. They prescribed a drug to treat memory and behavior disorders. Nothing else. In his statement before the Ertzainza, the alleged criminal recounted that the first woman who died began to rave when they were both in his gym, which caused him to suffer an attack of uncontrolled rage due to the tumor he suffers from in head. Realizing that she was dead, I tried to get rid of her. I had flashes in perception. She mixed reality with loss of control. As has happened to me for four years. Jorge Garcia Gasco Lamancher, the lawyer leading the prosecution on behalf of a brother and a son of Yeni Sofia Rivalo, describes Aguilar as a man with messianic overtones. But he does not believe that he did what he was supposed to do because he lost his mind, nor that the brain cyst impairs his faculties. Neither does Tamara Martinez, the lawyer who represents the accusation brought by the feminist association Clara Campomore. He is very smart, very calculating and very manipulative. He had a certain social hook, he connected well with people and took advantage of his appearances on television, she says. One of these interventions, under the name of Huang C. Aguilar, was in the year 2000 in the prestigious TV program Reads, directed by Edouard Ponset. Francisco Javier Baramendi, the prestigious criminal defense attorney who defends the alleged criminal, does not reveal what his strategy will be, I never talk about the matters I deal with and even less when the case has not been the subject of a final resolution. Justice will say the last word. The trial of the false Shaolin monk begins in Bilbao. April 17, 2015. The trial of Juan Carlos Aguilar, known as the false Shaolin monk, begins this Friday at the Audiencia de Bizkaia. He was arrested on June 2, 2013 as the alleged perpetrator of the torture and death of the two women and today. Almost two years after this case that shocked the country due to the cruelty of the alleged murderer and his facade built on lies, he sits on the bench with uncertainty as to whether he will keep the confession to two murders with treachery before the court, which in turn will affect the duration of the oral hearing. 
Through a letter, Aguilar acknowledged a few weeks ago the treacherous murders of the Nigerian woman Maureen Ada Otuya and the Colombian Jenny Sofia Raboyo, although she rejected the cruelty of which she is also accused in the case of the former, according to the lawyer representing the family of this victim. Mere chance in the form of delays has allowed two of the most media-produced cases of recent months to come together before a judge with sufficient interest beyond the Basque country. The second day of the statements of the so-called Cabisas case, with obvious political and financial ramifications, is counter-programmed with the start of the hearing against the false Shaolin monk. But the horrible legend of Juan Carlos Aguilar will be clearly imposed on all televisions in the face of the morbidity that surrounds the sinister events that occurred in his Bilbao gym. More than 100 journalists have accreditation to follow this trial at the Bizkaya court, which could shorten its initially estimated duration of two weeks in the event that the murderer confirms the terms of his letter. Media interest has reached such a point that the Palace of Justice feels overwhelmed. There is only physical space for a small group of informants to follow the hearing from the same room where Aguilar's trial begins. The President of the High Court of Justice of the Basque Country, Juan Luis Ibarra, has in fact summoned the accredited journalists to make them participants in the situation generated in a gesture of evident understanding. In this contact he will go together with the Dean Ainer Uriarty and his predecessor, Alfonso Gonzalez Guija. The constitution of the popular jury will mark the starting point of the trial of the Shaolin, who spends the previous hours in the Zabala prison in Alava, and where he will remain during the days that the hearing lasts for logical security reasons. Aguilar began to be defended by Javier Baramendi. Curiously, this lawyer defended this Thursday the interests of Rafael Alcorda, accused in the Cabisas case. But the relationship barely lasted beyond the first few weeks of attendance. Baramendi, however, was chosen by Aguilar's family after his arrest and assisted him in his first statement before the judge, refusing to testify. Now, in a gesture of undoubted significance, Aguilar acknowledged a few weeks ago the treacherous murders of the Nigerian woman Maureen Ada Otuya and the Colombian Jenny Sofia Raboyo, although she rejected the cruelty of which she is also accused in the case of the former, as reported to F by the lawyer representing the family of this victim. In the event that in his expected statement this Friday he maintains said recognition, a hearing will be held behind closed doors to rearrange the practice of the evidence, which would be limited to judging the cruelty, which would considerably shorten the oral hearing, which in principle, it is scheduled to run until May 5th. The fact of not recognizing the cruelty means that if the existence of this aggravating factor cannot be demonstrated, the defendant would serve an effective sentence of 25 years. If his practice is appreciated, the effective sentence would amount to 30 years, the maximum provided for in Spanish law. Juan Carlos Aguilar was arrested on June 2, 2013 and imprisoned days later as the alleged perpetrator of the torture and death of the two women, as well as the dismemberment of the Colombian citizen. He was arrested by the Ertzainza in the gym he ran in the center of Bilbao, called Zen 4, after an agent of this body rescued the young Nigerian Ada Otuya from inside, who they found handcuffed and gagged, and in a state of shock. Extreme gravity after having suffered a brutal beating. The 29-year-old woman, who worked as a prostitute, was admitted to the Baserto Hospital in a coma, where she died three days later. After her arrest, Aguilar also confessed to killing another woman, 40-year-old Colombian Jenny Sofia Raboyo. Remains of her dismembered corpse were located in the gym. In the brief of provisional qualifications, the prosecutor's office classifies these events as two treacherous murders, for which it requests 20 years in prison for each one, in addition to the payment of more than 286,000 euros in compensation to the families of the victims. The popular accusation, exercised by the Clara Campo More Association, and the private accusations, which represent the relatives of the two women, raise the request for sentences up to 45 years, understanding that in the case of Ada Otuya, the false monk acted also with cruelty. I murdered them suddenly, unexpectedly, and unexpectedly. April 17, 
2015. Yes, he is going to testify and he is also going to plead guilty. Juan Carlos Aguilar, the false Shaolin monk, has just cleared up the two initial unknowns in the most publicized oral hearing in recent times in Vizcaya, with 119 accredited media to cover the case of the murders of Maureen Ada Otuya, a 29-year-old Nigerian, and Jenny Sofia Raboyo, a 40-year-old Colombian. In a pleadings read on the first day of the trial and before she gave an oral statement, she has acknowledged that she murdered both women, suddenly, unexpectedly, and unexpectedly, after taking them to her gym and to tie them up and mistreat them. Although his lawyer has already submitted a brief at the provincial court of Bizkaia, the defendant has just acknowledged it before the courtroom, yes, in a document read by the judicial secretary. Aguilar has listened to it with his eyes closed. The fake Shaolin agrees to indemnify the families of the victims. He has just asked that his bank accounts be liquidated and the money divided between the two, deducting the equivalent of the minimum interprofessional salary to guarantee his subsistence. By rejecting cruelty, and if the accusations do not prove that there was, he could avoid serving a maximum sentence of 30 years in prison and they would stay at 25. It is expected that after the party's briefs, Aguilar will give an oral statement and answer questions from the prosecution, prosecutor and defense. The trial may drag on for three weeks. The accusations ask for between 40 and 45 years in prison in compensation that is close to 300,000 euros. The Background of the Case Juan Carlos Aguilar was arrested on June 2, 2013 and imprisoned days later as the alleged perpetrator of the torture and death of the two women, as well as the dismemberment of the Colombian citizen. He was arrested by the Ertzainza in the gym he ran in the center of Bilbao, called Zen 4, after an agent of this body rescued the young Nigerian Ada Otuya from inside, who they found handcuffed and gagged, and in a state of shock. Extreme gravity after having suffered a brutal beating. The 29-year-old woman, who worked as a prostitute, was admitted to the Basurdo Hospital in a coma, where she died three days later. After her arrest, Aguilar also confessed to killing another woman, 40-year-old Colombian Jenny Sofia Raboyo. Remains of her dismembered corpse were located in the gym. In the brief of provisional qualifications, the prosecutor's office classifies these events as two treacherous murders, for which it requests 20 years in prison for each one, in addition to the payment of more than 286,000 euros in compensation to the families of the victims. The popular accusation, exercised by the Clara Campomore Association, and the private accusations, which represent the relatives of the two women, raised the request for sentences up to 45 years, understanding that in the case of Ada Otuya, the false monk acted also with cruelty. I recognize everything, says the false Shaolin, except the cruelty. April 17, 2015 the lawyer for the defense of the false Shaolin, Livia Gonzalez, recalled that Juan Carlos Aguilar has recognized all the facts, except the cruelty. Shortly after Juan Carlos Aguilar has taken the floor. It was 1 p.m. Although in the document presented to the room he accepted the murders, there was still a doubt about his attitude towards the accusations and, above all, whether he ratified it in all its terms. The false Shaolin, on which sentences of between 40 and 45 years in prison are pending. He has done it but only in questions to the prosecutor. He has not responded to any of the other parties. Neither Yeni's lawyer, Jorge Garcia Gasco, nor Maureen Ada's, Jose Miguel Fernandez, nor that of the private prosecution, the Clara Campomor Association, Maite Iturate. With unusual coldness, after listening to the accounts of the accusations with his eyes closed, in a kind of meditative state, he went out to the middle of the room and stood erect, with a windbreaker jacket over his shoulders, and answered the microphone that yes, to all the prosecutor's questions. Yes, I recognize all that, he said without showing any kind of empathy despite the seriousness of the facts. Prosecutor, he tied Yeni's arms and assaulted her to death. Aguilar, 
Yes. Prosecutor, did she kick her body? Aguilar, yes, I recognize all of that. Prosecutor, did you dissect the body? Aguilar, yes. Prosecutor, as for Maureen, did he grab her and take her inside her and tied her wrists and her neck? Aguilar, yes. Prosecutor, he strangled her with ropes and zip ties. Eagle, yes. Shortly after he has given up answering the questions of the accusations. They have reorganized their strategies and have substantially reduced the duration of the trial, by limiting the evidence to trying to prove that there has been cruelty in the case of the second victim, the Nigerian Maureen Ada Otuya. Aguilar was arrested by the Ertsaintsa on June 2, 2013 in Bilbao after having savagely beaten Maureen Ada Otuya, a Nigerian national, in the gym she owned, who entered the Basurdo Hospital in a coma, where she died. Three days later. During the search of the gym and the address where she lived on Itariza Street, the Basque police found the dismembered corpse of another woman, Jenny Sofia Roboyo, a native of Colombia. The accusations maintain that the defendant enjoyed maintaining sexual practices of domination with women subjected to him and defenseless, even fainted or deprived of consciousness, in reference to the photographs that were located in which they appeared drugged women with whom he had relations. Among them, images of Roboyo appeared. Specifically, the lawyer for Marin Ada Otuya's family points out, in his petition for conviction, that the defendant beat the victims until they were killed and collected these practices on photographic support for the subsequent enjoyment of he. For this reason, he believes that he fantasized, planned and executed the crime of the young Nigerian woman, so that in the early morning of June 2nd, around 4.15 a.m., with the premeditated intention of satiating his murderous instincts, he went out with his vehicle to look for a victim. In this way, according to the lawyer, Juan Carlos Aguilar found Maureen Ada Otuya. When the police found her, Maureen Ada Otuya was on the floor, half hidden by some mattresses and covered by a cloth, with her clothing torn. She, she was bloody and unconscious, with her hands and feet tied with zip ties and two wraps of duct tape around her neck. Under the tape she had a rope wrapped around her neck five times and a bridle tightening it, says the victim's lawyer. The young woman, Ella, was admitted to the hospital in a coma and died on June 5 without having regained consciousness. The lawyer emphasizes that Juan Carlos Aguilar chose the victim carefully as she was a vulnerable woman in a situation of social exclusion with little social support network in Bilbao, an immigrant from a very low socioeconomic stratum, who does not she was going to be missed by no one, that is, a woman whom I considered easy prey. Jenny Raboyo's lawyers are demanding 20 years for murder with treachery, but Ada's is also asking for cruelty. The prosecutor, however, does not believe that there has been cruelty and asks for two sentences of murder with treachery, 40 years. Aguilar went crazy when Jenny asked him if he was a millionaire. April 20, 2015 Second day of the trial of the false Shaolin, for the murder of two women, and second day without a change in attitude, leaning back in the chair with his eyes closed almost all the time and with his hands joined. If on the first day Aguilar acknowledged all the facts, that is, the murder of the two women, the Colombian, Jenny Sofia Raboyo, 40, and the Nigerian Maureen Ada Otuya, 29, Yesterday he remained silent during the description and the story of the House of Horrors in which he turned his gym in June 2013. He first murdered and dismembered Jenny and a few days later kidnapped Maureen against her will for hours, mistreating her, beating and injuring her, and then apparently having sex while photographing him, leaving her in a coma. She died three days later. To questions from his defense attorney, the police instructor in the case explained that Aguilar declared that he went crazy when Jenny asked if he was a millionaire. The agent has stated that Aguilar told him that he started by hitting her and killed her. A thesis that would coincide with the one maintained by the defense that the false Shaolin murdered both women suddenly 
unexpectedly, and unexpectedly. The agent immediately said that the subsequent investigation does not fit with that first statement. The various agents who have testified have described what they found in the gym and in the different rooms around the tatami area, where the false Shaolin instructed his students and committed atrocities. A space that everyone has drawn as especially hot, with several rooms and semi-hidden doors with several locks and very dark. Aguilar offered no resistance in the place where they found him and where he had dragged Maureen's badly injured body to hide it under a bunk, the room where we found her was a small place, the door was covered by another and we opened it with difficulty for people. I'm 1.84 and I had to squat. The victim's blood was recent, said one of the agents. From there the investigation began. That same day and the following day, the agents found Jenny's remains in green garbage bags in the gym and at the home of Juan Carlos Aguilar. On the balcony of his home there was one of those bags with two others inside, in which the agents found some bones from the Colombian woman's arm and hers two breast prostheses. The members of the jury have formulated the first questions aimed at interpreting whether there was cruelty. The view continues. I heard cries for help and another person was dragging him by the hair. April 20, 2015. I saw a person of color screaming for help, she was a person of color, and another person dragged her down by her hair. The neighbor on Maximo Aguirre Street who gave the alert that made it possible to arrest Juan Carlos Aguilar, has described that she called the police after seeing a woman with an anguished face knocking on the window of the gym door and screaming they anticipated that something was going to happen to him. This woman who has remained separated by a screen from the defendant, the false Shaolin, has described that the screams were evident and that she interpreted that Maureen knew that something was going to happen to her. Shortly after, the Basque police arrived and found the Shaolin and Maureen practically in a coma. Although the health services managed to revive her, she died three days later. Several of those attending the trial, huddled shortly after the second day ended, wondered how many Jenny and Maureen there would be now if the woman who tipped off the police hadn't come across this scene. Aguilar later justified that he committed these acts because he was, as if in a state of permanent drunkenness, but not due to alcohol, but to, a tumor he suffered from, the Ertsena instructor of the proceedings has declared. The Ertsenas who participated in the operation discovered photographs of Jenny Raboyo, sitting and tied up, although she was still alive and later ones, nine hours later, already dead, untied and with her face bruised. Other images of another woman, with whom he had relations, also appeared, with her eyes covered, and the body of Yeni Raboyo in the background. According to the Ertsena instructor, there are numerous videos and photographs of semi-conscious women, in erotic clothing, who were later located. Some of them were subjected to harassment and ill-treatment, and, to one in particular, he urinated on her and hit her, especially, on the breasts. Aguilar faces requests for between 40 and 45 years in jail. Maureen was strangled and Jenny dismembered post-mortem. April 21, 2015 Third day of the trial against the false Shaolin monk, Juan Carlos Aguilar, and third day in which the alleged murderer of Jenny Raboyo and Maureen Ada Otuya, remains impassive and in the same reflective posture. Without changing his body posture and barely opening his eyes, Aguilar listened on Tuesday to the statements of the forensic doctors who performed the autopsies on the women. The experts have confirmed that Maureen Ada Otuya died three days after being found in the gym of her alleged attacker due to the lack of oxygen to her brain that had caused her strangulation and her multiple bruises. The strangulation, according to forensics, was possibly carried out with an esparto rope that the Ertsainsa found at the home of the false Shaolin. The team of four doctors that carried out the autopsies of the two victims points out that Jenny Raboyo's body was dismembered once the woman had died. There were no signs of a fight and no remains of drugs or other substances were found in the victim's body that could indicate the opposite. They have also indicated that due to the characteristics of the cuts, both the remains found in the seven garbage bags of the gym and those found in the defendant's private home. 
We're sectioned with time and with some knowledge of the practice and everything points to the fact that the the dismemberments were carried out with more than one cutting instrument, one of which had to be heavy, such as, an axe, they added. Both victims have bruises that show they were mistreated. On the one hand, 40-year-old Jenny had blows to the head as well as a bone fracture in the pelvic area, which were produced when she was alive. In turn, Maureen, 29, had facial injuries in both eyes, one ear, a bruise on her lip that required five stitches, scratches on her hips, and abrasions on her neck, hands, and legs. In addition, after an internal analysis, the Nigerian had thrombi and bruises in the liver, neck and scalp. According to forensics, several of these injuries could have occurred in a fight between the victim and the aggressor, since there are indications such as broken glass or the blood that was in the gym, which show that there was an important fight. Two Ertsenas who were in charge of the files of a camera that was discovered on the false Shaolin, have also appeared at the Palace of Justice in Bilbao to declare that a total of 537 images have been found, of which 74 had not been deleted. And they were in plain sight. The 74 archived photographs were of sexual content and in them appear images of the alleged murderer with the bodies of the victims, who are shown partially or totally naked with visible bruises and bruises, handcuffed and, in several of them, with the false Shaolin on top of him. The rest of the photographs were less significant, commented one of the Urtseinses. The false Shaolin, guilty of treachery murder, but without cruelty. April 24, 2015 The popular jury has declared the false Shaolin, Juan Carlos Aguilar, the perpetrator of the death in his Bilbao gym of Maureen Ada Otuya, a Nigerian national, guilty of murder with treachery, but without cruelty, and of having dismembered a Jenny Sofia Raboyo, a native of Colombia, in June 2013. The popular jury has unanimously found Aguilar guilty of both murders with treachery and, on the contrary, seven of the nine members of the jury do not believe that he committed cruelty in Maureen's case. The members of the jury in their entirety have ruled that the false Shaolin, in accordance with Article 78 of the Penal Code, be deprived of penal benefits, as previously demanded by the indictments. The resolution, known after less than 48 hours of deliberations after the five oral hearing sessions, surrounded by strong media expectation, in the Bizkaya court, has been criticized by private accusations. The lawyers for the prosecutions have been opposed to the verdict, but have added that they must wait for the sentence to decide whether to appeal or not. We have to wait for the maximum penalty, commented Jorge Garcia, Jenny's lawyer. For his part, Jose Miguel Fernandez, Maureen's lawyer, has been dissatisfied, since, we believe that the cruelty has been proven, and in the same vein, the association's lawyer Clara Campo-Moore has lamented that, they have not been able to see the evidence of cruelty. After the recognition of the facts by the only defendant, it remained to be determined whether Aguilar acted cruelly in his two criminal acts. For the popular jury he did not. The prosecutor in the case already showed himself in this line of argument during the third day of the case, as did the forensic experts who performed the autopsies on the victims. After these contributions from the specialists, the private prosecutions were insisting in their subsequent interventions that the cruelty was also psychological so that it could be taken into account by the popular jury. However, the verdict now known ends with the main unknown that remained to be resolved after Aguilar assumed responsibility for him in events that have caused shocking scenes of strong rejection when the photographs of the victim's condition have been exposed. Until the reading of the verdict by Magistrate Manuel Ayo, President of the Court, the false Shaolin has remained in the dungeons of the court, from where he will be transferred to the Zabala prison, Alava, before his destination to the Duenas prison, Palencia where he is being held after the first days after his arrest. Aguilar has remained impassive and with an absent gesture throughout the trial once at the opening of the oral hearing he acknowledged responsibility for the facts. With unusual coldness, after listening to the accounts of the accusations with his eyes closed, in a kind of meditative state, 
He went out to the middle of the room last Monday and, standing tall, with a windbreaker over his shoulders, answered in the affirmative to all the prosecutor's questions. Yes, I recognize all that, he said without showing any kind of empathy despite the seriousness of the facts. Precisely this attitude was worn by the president of the court to the members of the popular jury. He has not shown remorse in any way, he reminded them within the legal guidelines that they should take into account in his deliberations. In his statement, the false Shaolin refused to answer the rest of the judicial representatives or Yeni's lawyer, Jorge Garcia Gasco, or Maureen Adas, Jose Miguel Fernandez, or that of the private prosecution, the association Clara Campo Amor, Maite Aturi. Aguilar was arrested by the Ertzainza on June 2, 2013 in Bilbao after having savagely beaten Maureen Ada Otuya, a Nigerian national, in the gym she owned, who entered the Basurdo Hospital in a coma, where she died three times. Days later, during the search of the gym and the address where he lived on Etoriza Street, the Basque police found the dismembered corpse of another woman, Jenny Sofia Raboyo, a native of Colombia. The accusations maintain that the defendant enjoyed maintaining sexual practices of domination with women subjected to him and defenseless, even fainted or deprived of consciousness, in reference to the photographs that were located in which they appeared drugged women with whom he had relations. The false Shaolin, sentenced to 38 years in prison for double murder with treachery. April 30, 2015. There is already a sentence for the false Shaolin. Juan Carlos Aguilar has been sentenced to 38 years in prison for the malicious murder of Jenny Sofia Roboyo, a 40-year-old Colombian, and Maureen Ada Otuya, a 29-year-old Nigerian, on May 25 and June 2, 2013, respectively. After picking them up in his vehicle on General Concha Street in Bilbao and taking them to his gym, in addition, it sentences the defendant to compensation amounting to 397,000 euros. For the Rivalo family, the compensation is 120,000 euros to Amar Martinez Rivalo, Jenny's son Dash, the same amount to Santiago Rivalo Turian, the father, and 12,000 euros to Benicia Rivalo, the mother. In the case of Ada Otuya, he must indemnify God's power Otuya, the father of the victim with 120,000 euros and Franconcio Otuya, brother, with 25,000 euros. The sentence reduces the request of the prosecutor, who requested 40 years in prison, by two years, since the magistrate president Manuel Ayo has taken into account the acknowledgement that Aguilar made of his guilt on the first day of the oral hearing, as well as the absence of criminal record. The accusation requested 45 years, for understanding that the aggravating circumstance of cruelty should be taken into account. The maximum sentence that Aguilar can serve is 25 years in prison, in accordance with current legislation. At the same time, the judge points out that, there is no sign of repentance, in the defendant and also the facts are of, extraordinary gravity by causing the death of two women who have not had the possibility of defending themselves and unusual violence has been used into the first victim, whom he has come to dismember, and also the second, whom he strangled with a cord. On April 24, the popular jury, made up of five men and four women, read the verdict, in which they unanimously considered it proven that Aguilar had treacherously murdered his two victims. However, they determined, with seven votes in favor and two against, that the cruelty had not been proven. That is to say, that he would have inflicted on Ada Otuya, the Shaolin dismembered Raboyo's body, so it was impossible to determine, excessive and inhuman suffering. Possible Recourse the question now is whether the prosecution will appeal the judge's sentence. After the verdict was known, the lawyers, despite showing their respect for the jury's decision, did not hide their disappointment that the cruelty was not appreciated in the case of the murder of Maureen Ada Otuya. We are very disappointed, we believe that cruelty has been proven, said the lawyer for Ada Otuya's family, Jose Miguel Fernandez, as he left the Palace of Justice. With a serious gesture, he specified, from respect, we do not share it. 
We are going to wait for the sentence to study the possibilities of appeal. Words almost identical to those of Maite Ature, lawyer for the Clara Campo Amor Association. We are a little sorry but we show all our respect. He added that he appreciated the work of the jury, especially since they have been deliberating for quite some time. I think they've been looking for that evidence. For his part, Jorge Garcia Gasco, representing the Raboyo family, admitted that the jury's verdict was a very possible scenario. I don't know if it was a matter of our not knowing how to explain it, he lamented. Quick judgment. The trial of the false Shaolin went faster than initially planned and lasted only a week. One factor was decisive, that Aguilar recognized on the first day, April 17, on the first day of the oral hearing, that he had murdered Raboyo and Ada Otuya. This significantly reduced the evidence provision phase. The key, from that moment on, consisted in proving the point that the defendant and his defense insisted on refuting, that he had been merciless with the Nigerian woman. The prosecutor also maintained that this circumstance had not occurred. Throughout the four days of the oral hearing, the Ertsenas who arrested Aguilar passed through the Vizcaya Provincial Court, the witness who alerted that a woman, Ada Otuya, was requesting help, the forensic doctors who examined the victims and experts who collected photographs and videos of the defendant. His testimonies failed to convince the jury, nor did the prosecution's arguments, which defined that Shaolin as a predator and potential serial killer who would kill again if he had the chance. Throughout the entire trial the defendant's attitude drew attention. He hieratratic, impassive, oblivious to what was happening around him. Often with their eyes closed, and frequently with their fingers interlocked as the only gesture. He only spoke on the first day, when he responded to the prosecutor's questions with monosyllables and a brief phrase, I recognize everything. And he refused, after raising the conclusions to final, to exercise his right to the last word. At no time, as the judge himself stressed, did he show the slightest hint of regret. Ahead, pending the possible appeal that tries to extend the sentence, a long season in prison. And here is today's story. If you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any episode. See you in the next video.